from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, the summer sun is shining and the celebrity stories are sizzling in a super juicy edition of Hot Topics. And Donald Trump announces he's running for president. Plus, can you choose to be black? The latest on the Rachel Dolezal controversy. Wendy's breaking it down with all of the other big headlines of the week at the Hot Talk table. And another lucky Wendy watcher gets an incredible floor-to-ceiling makeover in our Room in June giveaway. Now, here's Wendy! Studio audience. How you doing? I'm doing great. Let's get started. It's time for what? Okay, so look, I'm exhausted. Uh, Madonna just released the video for her song, Bitch, a Madonna. Now, have you ever heard the song? No. Well, it's like techno music, like what the kids listen to, like that nonstop, monotonous drive that I don't know about you. That's when I'm ready to leave the club. Anyway, so everybody's in it. She got some major stars. You see Chris Rock and Rita Ora. Miley Cyrus is in there. Um, Beyonce's in there. That right there is Madonna's young son, you know, her adopted son, uh, Nicki Minaj, and whatnot. Now, the interesting thing about this, first of all, the lighting is excellent. I think Madonna looked terrific in the video. Yeah. But people are saying that she's trying to one-up Taylor Swift. I agree with the people. So, okay, first of all, look at the font, the, the way both covers are written. Okay, do you see sim similarities or is it just me? Yes. Okay, Taylor's Bad Blood came out first, which by the way, in history, that is the most viewed video 24 in 24 hours in the history of music. Um, you know, Madonna and Taylor used to get along. They don't get along anymore. Madonna went out of her way to have Taylor's frenemy there uh, in her video, um, Katy Perry. And um, if, if, you, if you notice her in the video. Um, but I just feel like, and then Kate, and then Taylor had a lot of celebrities in her video, but her celebrities, in my opinion, were people that she was actually, that she's actually friends with, like her model friends and people like that. I don't picture Madonna being authentic friends with any of these people. <laughs> I think that, like, on the day that she went to support Jay-Z for that big launch of Tidal, that she probably said, okay, I'll help you launch Tidal. You know, I'll stand on the stage with everybody as long as you all show up at my music video. Yeah. And so, whereas Taylor's seems effortless because it was her actual friends, it seems like Madonna went out of her way to try to one-up Taylor. But Madonna, the song is called Bitch a Madonna, so act like it, okay? Like, I mean, you're the queen of all these fleas. You're not even supposed to be paying them no name. I, you understand what I'm saying? Even though nobody's buying Madonna music and stuff like that, that doesn't matter. The, the, well, nobody's buying a lot of music, you know what I mean? The Madonna's not the only one, but she's supposed to be better than fighting with a bunch of schoolgirls, number one. And also better than fighting with anyone. And it just makes her look desperate and older yeah. by engaging in this infantile behavior. 
that's all I have to say about that. Just, you know, poor Madonna. Well, Kris Jenner, <laughs> AKA that woman, <laughs> AKA the devil. <laughs> but look, you know, I'm an equal opportunity talker. When I like something, I talk about it. When I don't, I'm on your side with this story, Chris. So I'm gonna sell it to the people. Here we go. Chris is going to do a tell-all, allegedly, about Caitlyn. Oh. I have to tell you, I would read that. It's gonna be a New York Times bestseller. Yeah. Uh, now, we're in our Hot Topics meeting. The producers were all sitting around in my office and we're talking and you know, a few people were like, well, you know, if she's got something to say, why does she have to make money off of it? I said, because it's that woman. <laughs> you know how she does. She's not acting new. It's Caitlyn who's new, remember. All right, number one. Number two, I don't want to see a one hour sit down interview with her because she's got more than an hour's worth of stuff to tell me. <laughs> Like, I am so curious about, you know, the, the different nuances. Like, one day, Bruce and I went out, and I forgot my lipstick upstairs. And when I ran upstairs, you know, there was Bruce. You know, gluing lashes or whatever. You, you, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I mean? Like, you can't cover... All, one hour of TV is only 44 minutes of programming, the other 16 minutes commercials. So she has more to say to me. I'm interested in more than her being on TV. But I do have to say this, Chris. I'm with you in writing this book, but you should show that you're writing it out of anger and betrayal. And the way you do that is you don't keep the money. You give it to UNICEF or, 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 or the LGBT community. I mean, and I don't mean a portion. You donate all the proceeds of the book to the LGBT community or something like that. And uh, this is a book, listen, this is a book that I would want to read. And I'm sure a lot of people would want to read it. As a woman, I am very, very, very happy for Caitlyn. You know I love people who walk in their own truths. I do it every day here on the show. But, but, if I was Chris, I would never get, a, get over being pissed at Caitlyn. Ever. There, there's no amount of me I could never get over this. And even though I'm sure she saw glimpses of her husband wanting to transition, I'm sure they had the conversation. But, you know, they were married for 28 years. 28 years ago, nobody ever heard of, well, a lot of people never heard of, you know, gender reassignment, you know, transitioning and everything. You just say, oh, oh, Bruce, go on. <laughs> you know? But now that it's reality, as a woman, if I was married to Caitlyn, I would be devastated, forever pissed, and I would write a thick, juicy, Jackie Collins-style book <laughs> and tell it all. I would tell it all. By the way, uh, Chris, I mean, you know, I'm, just gonna take, I'm just gonna take a survey. If you were Chris, would you be upset with um, this whole Caitlyn thing? Yeah. Just clap. As a woman, I mean, it, no, it wouldn't make me question my womanhood, although maybe it would, I just don't, I just, uh, but I gotta tell you something, Chris, if you're gonna write it, you've got to write it good because right now there's only one book on my radar and it's by Holly Madison, that Down the Rabbit Hole book. Oh. Have you heard about this? Mm. <laughs> okay, there's several copies of the book floating around here with the Wendy staff and everybody's all in. If you, if you want to be teased before you get the book, she's on the cover of People magazine and she's talking in there about how first night she met Hugh Hefner, he was sitting in a banquet at a club with a bunch of exact blondes. Everybody had like white, white blonde hair, not like dishwater, but white blonde hair. And, and, and so Hef called her over and, and you know, she's from a little tiny small town and, um, you know, someplace out there, and he he had uh, he had some quaaludes. Uh -oh. I know you haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> or back when I was in high school, we called them lewds. He had some lewds in a Kleenex, 
and offered her one, but she didn't take one. But I mean, it's, it's fascinating. And he would have like date nights and he'd be smoking weed in the bed and the room looked like, a, his bedroom looked like a hoarder's paradise. And <laughs> oh my, oh my gosh. There's, by the way, I'm really excited about this book, but even more excited because Holly's gonna be here next Wednesday. And let me tell you something. You can count on me to extract every bit of information from her, because Holly has moved on with her life, you see. She's married, and she's got a daughter named Rainbow, and she's got a very successful burlesque career in Vegas. So she's got nothing to lose by spilling the tea on Hef, and we've got everything to gain by having her on our show. See you next week, Holly. I can't wait to talk. Dirty old man. Anyway. Not everyone is a huge fan of Caitlyn Jenner, including allegedly her own son, Brody. Aww. Well, according to our friends at Radar Online, Brody is tired of Caitlyn's fame hungry ways and is even threatening to boycott the ESPY Awards. Aww. Well, here's what. <laughs> he's cute and he's got slightly crossed eyes. <laughs> And if you've ever seen him on the beach in Malibu, he's got a big tattoo down the side. Jenner, written real big. I don't know how tall he is. That's the only, to me, that's always the only caveat, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, look. So, so, you know, Brody says that he was supportive of Caitlyn back when Caitlyn was Bruce, before even Kim came out and tried to fly the flag for being the most supportive one in the family. No, Brody was there. Um, Brody even supports him now behind the scenes. What Brody is not supporting is probably what a lot of you, I know what, what I'm not supporting. I don't think any of this needs to be played out on TV. I, I, I mean, you, do you, you understand what I'm saying? Um, I think, you know, he's got like 10 kids, including, you know, the step kids and things. He's got a wild child, 17 year old, running around with a 25 year old baby's father. <laughs> and, and, you know, all the mixed up stuff in between. I just feel like, you know, it's, it's great and I'm happy and, and she certainly looks terrific. But I agree with Brody. Brody does not want to see his father. His mother. <laughs> his father? We still call father? Yep, it's still his dad. His dad. Okay, his dad. <laughs> Hold on, I need a drink. No, but he, um, he is very supportive, but he just doesn't want to see it played out on reality TV. He's tired of all the interviews, and it's almost like with Caitlyn, a when's it going to stop and go away and live a quiet life kind of thing. Because when you see the first sit down with Diane Sawyer, okay, and we were all riveted by that. Now he's got, he's gonna, oh, she's gonna get the SP award, which by the way, I think she deserves, but we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about it or fight about it later on with our hot talk panel. Um, but then it's gonna be the reality show. Then there'll probably be a book. Then there's going to be numerous um, other speaking engagements, you know, on TV. And then if I have my way, Caitlin will be on The View. Only because, uh, okay, look, I'm a woman, I'm allowed to flip-flop. No, I don't think this should be played out on TV, but The View is in desperate need for a resuscitation <laughs> and, and a reason to tune in. I watch every day, because those are my girls, and they watch us in the makeup room. How you doing? But, you know, in talking to people, uh, you know, in taking my own little survey, Caitlyn would be a reason to tune in, and not just for the hot topics in the beginning. It, to tune in to see what she's wearing, and how she crosses her legs, and how she holds her cup. And then, when they have guests come on, like say Jimmy Fallon comes on later on, you know, after hot topics, how she talks to Jimmy Fallon, does she cross her legs like this? Or does she sit like a dude? You, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? And this picture, if we could show the, the bigger part of the picture, Caitlyn even has thigh gap, okay? Oh, <laughs> oh ow. But you know what? I'm excited to watch the um, SPs, and I don't know what channel ESPN is, because I'm not into sports. I'm into sports when sports intersects hot topics, and we talk about it, that's it. But I don't have to, if you're like me, and you don't know where your ESPN is, don't worry about it. They're making it convenient, because it's gonna be on ABC. See, we know where that is. Yeah. Yes, ABC. On a Wednesday night.
And I don't care about watching the whole ESPYs, but I'm going to wait for my boys to call me yep. and say, turn the channel now. Yeah. OK? Yeah. All right. <laughs> there are lots of juicy stories in the monthly magazines. It's time for Wendy's Gotcha Cover. Let's go. <laughs> Taylor Swift, um, uh, Rita Ora is talking about Taylor Swift's man, you know, the DJ that she's still dating, on the inside of Marie Claire magazine. That's Rita on the front. Sidebar, try as I might, who is this woman? <laughs> no, 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 and I say it, you know, I surround myself by lots of young people here at Wendy. You know, I like to, oh, Miss Wendy likes to keep up with things. <laughs> but you know what's really odd? Even my young people around here are like, we don't know. And I was like, oh, I felt so relevant when they said that. But look, <laughs> look, they don't know either. I mean, I know she's done a verse on one song or another. And if it weren't for radio stations, you know how they print on your radio who's singing? Yeah. If, the, if, if it weren't for that, uh, there's a lot I wouldn't know. <laughs> but anyway, so this woman, Rita Ora, who, by the way, she's Albanian. I, I didn't know she was Albanian. I thought she was like half black and, and, and white and British or something like that. Anyway, she, this is the Alba this shot. How you doing, Albanians? <laughs> um, um, anyway, she's on the cover of Marie Claire magazine inside. She's talking about um, when she used to date Calvin Harris. And she says that she's the one that broke up with him. The problem is, if we don't know who she is, then what do we care about what she says? <laughs> Let's move along. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, one thing that she did say in the article, though, that, uh, you know, resonated with, with me, and I guess a lot of people, not so young, though. Um, she loves to be in a relationship. She doesn't like to be alone. She, she loves to be in a relationship. And I find there to be nothing wrong or weak with that. I, it, there's something a little scary about that, though, when you're young, like when you're in your, your 20s. I spent all of my 20s traveling around trying to make a radio career for myself and stuff, and it was very, a very lonely ride because I had nothing in common with my friends because I was very ambitious, and they wanted to party. Do you know what I'm saying? So I spent, like, my 20s all alone. I got to know myself, became my own best friend. You know, I dated, but, you know, I wasn't really hung up on, you know, like having a lot of boyfriends. If I wanted a dinner and somebody to pay for it, I had no problem, you know, <laughs> finding somebody. But, um, but I, I have to admit to you now that no, I love being in a relationship. And if one relationship fails, I'm monkey barring right along to the next one. <laughs> I, I love, uh, I love the comfort of a man as Stephanie Mills would say. <laughs> um, and then Taraji P. Henson's on the cover of the latest issue of Allure magazine. <laughs> she looks good. And you know what's interesting about her career? Her career, and we all knew who she was from Baby Boy and you know some of the shows that she was on, but she just had a steady career in, right in the middle. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't over the moon. It was a steady career. So she was raising her son as a single mom, and she had all that time to really hustle and nurture her son and everything. And now, at the right time in life, because her son is now in college, doesn't live at home, um, her career has exploded. Now she's got all the time in the world to travel around and date and do what she wants. Plus, she knows who she is inside and out. It's just a really good career. Anyway, um, Taraji is revealing why she never hooks up with her co-stars. And here's what she says. She's actually said this before on our show. But what I like is that she's saying it again, which means she's consistent. <laughs> um, I always want to be known for my work, not who I date. You have to stay professional. It's a business. I'm not letting no knucklehead dude come between my hard work and my money. I like it. It's very true because, I mean, you know, and, and we don't know anything about her love life. I mean, you know, getting back to Rita Ora, no, I don't know who she is, but her image is bigger than whatever she does. Whatever she, like, you know her name, you know her look, but you don't know what she does. Taraji, you know her work. Not her love life. So, and she also says inside that um, she uh, really hates that she missed out on the Studio 54 era. <laughs> Something that we have in common. You know, she says that, it, but if she lived it, she'd probably be dead. Me too. 
Yeah, I'd probably be dead, but it just seems so fun. In New York, there was this Disco 92 WKTU station. And, and um, I would listen to that station, and they'd play all the Donna Summer and all the good stuff, and Carlos De Jesus and some of my favorite DJs, right? Al Bandero and them. And it just, you know, as a young Wendy in the suburbs, it just sounded so fun. Fun. And then the DJs would get back on the air the next morning and talk about what they did and the fabulous time they had. And then one of my favorite books is about the Studio 54 era. They used to ride a big cocaine spoon back and forth. <laughs> and, and look, and there was, there was a big moon in there. And um, they said Bianca Jagger rode a horse in there one time. <laughs> and then there's a, there was a place in there called The Bowels. And that's where, you know, big stars would escape to go in and stuff. And young people would go in there, like Brooke Shields would be in there. She's my age, but you know, she was, she was modeling at that time and Brooke would be in there and and Michael Jackson and and it was just I'd be dead though now so <laughs> perhaps it's best that I missed it anyway um look all right so we're continuing with Wendy's got you covered uh, Miley Cyrus opened up to Time Magazine online about looking for love. And she says that um sh it's easy to find someone to have sex with the hard part is <laughs> By the way, I'll take two, three antacids during the commercial, Brendan. Thanks. I feel the heartburn creeping up. Um, bleep, bleeping is easy. You can find someone to bleep in five seconds. We want to find someone who can talk, uh, who can talk to, and be ourselves with. That's fairly slim pickings. I agree. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, to me. And it's like, to me, no matter what you look like, you know, you can have three heads and five legs. It's easy to find somebody to have sex with. The hard part is, <laughs> the hard part is finding somebody that you can really take your wig off and, 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 and let your hair down and talk to. Um, and the interesting thing about Miley is that even though she's a wild child and does things that many of us don't approve of and we roll our eyes and suck our teeth, the, her heart of hearts is that she is, um, she's a relationship girl. You know what else she said? She said that her mom is her hero. Aww. You know, she loves her dad, but you know, and I was thinking about it. They asked me in the morning meeting, no offense, daddy, but you know what? If I had to choose between the two of you, daddy, mommy would be more my hero than you, only because a man can't teach a woman how to be a woman. And I mean a woman in totality. A man can tell you, daddy, your dads, they can tell us a lot of things, but it was my mom who would always have her nails done and always smell pretty. And I remember when I was a little girl, my mom has a double master's and she got both of them from Keene University in Jersey, which is like a half hour from our house. I remember my mom used to come home from teaching all day. She would get dinner ready, put it, you know, plate it for my father and my brother and stuff, and then put me in the car with her. And I drive up to the university and I would literally be sitting on the floor outside of the classroom doing my homework while my mom is in there getting an advanced degree. So and while it's still smelling good, nails done, fashion plate, smart as a whip, but just, Wendy, have your own money. Like a, a woman can teach a woman how to be a woman. So I get that she says, Miley says that her, her, her mother's her hero. Anyway, never you mind, look. That's Wendy's got you covered, thank you. <laughs> Listen, later on in the show, another lucky Wendy watcher is gonna win a fabulous kitchen, dining, and laundry room from our friends at Aaron's, but up next, our hot dog the talk panel is going to stir the pot, talking about the biggest stories of the week, so don't go far. Thanks. Summer has started. We're all new, so that means I've got one question for you. Check this out. Cal shares summer's best makeup trends. Go from, oh honey, no, to gorgeous sun kissed glow. You right. are done. Monday on an all new Wendy. <laughs> it's time to discuss this week's hottest topics. In our latest edition of Hot Talk, joining me are the host of the new show, 
incoming on Spotify. Joe Levy? Yeah. From Just Jenny, one of my favorite shows on Sirius. Say hello to Jenny Hot. Hi. And CNN anchor Aisha Sase. Yeah. Good to see you again. Okay. On Monday, Donald Trump announced that he's officially running for president. His speech highlighted his net worth, his real estate holdings, and the fact that America needs a leader who's not a loser. <laughs> so, Jenny, could he actually win? No freaking way! <laughs> oh, my God. Wendy, first of all, if you're going to be running for president or president, then you need to have social grace and also kind of watch your words. Yes. And just a few months ago, he tweeted something, and, you know, you put something on the Internet, it's there for good. Yes. And it's back, and this is what he tweeted. If Hillary Clinton can't satisfy her husband, what makes her think she can satisfy America? He's... <laughs> so, Part of the job description for president? <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the thing about Donald, I, I find him to be very entertaining. Yes. There's no what doubt do about so? that. You know, listen, uh, as you may be able to tell from this accent, I'm not from around here. <laughs> and I'm telling you, this makes me love America. Only in this country <laughs> could a man who has declared himself bankrupt four times, according to some counts, is a reality show host, think that he could be president. But I tell you, it's going to be a hell of an election race. It is going to be so interesting. Oh, I loved how he was selling himself in his announcement. I am a tough negotiator. Like, you can sit down at the table with Vladimir Putin and say, Vlad, you do not have class. You are fired. You're a I loser. I want you off the planet. Yeah, well, he's so classy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Don. let's be honest. According to some polls, 70% of Americans say they will never vote for Donald Trump. So then you have to ask the question, what is he thinking? Is this the ultimate ego trip? Well, that with also, those kind of stats, And last you time out, he went on president. the birther kick with Obama. He wanted to see the birth yes, certificate. Yes. None of us have ever seen his hairline. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> That's, that that's what Lisa Lampanelli said yesterday. But you want to know what? Oh, you said about 70% would never vote for him. We took a poll at wendyshow.com, and 63% of people said they would never vote for him. Mm. I thought that the gap would be a lot larger. Let me just finish this, mm. though. Uh, Donald Trump has almost as many Twitter followers as all the other 11 candidates combined. <laughs> wow. He has 3 million Twitter followers. The other ones combined have 3.6 million. <laughs> Uh, but, Wendy, uh, that's because he's a it's joke and he's funny. Uh, it's yeah. Not... He is funny. I mean, listen, and I think that, you know, one political commentator said Donald Trump is like the, the Kardashian of, you know, this election run. Yes. You know, he's got high name recognition. That's fine, but that's not how you win elections, and I think we all know that. And he's going to just, he's going to create great distraction. Uh, you know. Those debates are going to be amazing. Yes. Are we all going to watch yes, those debates? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so now... Everyone is still talking about Rachel Dolezal, the white woman who's now black. Uh, this week, she resigned as president of the local chapter of NAACP, and she also broke her silence on the Today Show. Let's look at this, and then we'll talk. Are you an African-American woman? I identify as black. When did it start? I would say uh, about five years old. You began it identifying yourself as African American? I was drawing self portraits with the brown crayon instead of the peach crayon and the black, you know, black curly hair and, you know, yeah, that, that, was, how, that was how I was portraying myself. Wow. Okay. Wow. What do you say, Isa? Uh, you know, this story, you know, we've heard from her parents and family members who say that never happened. That's what they say. But listen, at the end of the day, She's lied. Yeah. I mean, I think that the facts support the fact that she... This is the notion that, you know, I'm black today, I'm white tomorrow. Right. You know, it's not been some cons consistent thing. In 2002, she sued Howard University from the position of a white woman who right. claimed that she was being discriminated against. By the way, she's also bisexual, so... Oh. Uh, yeah, she, oh, she, yeah, she's... The... she's yeah. So she yeah. seems to decide... <laughs> she's everything. Yeah, she decides when she wants to be black or when she oh, wants wait. to be yeah. white. E even in that interview, she went back and forth. She said at five she thought she was black, but at 16 she identified as white. Right. But here's the thing. I agree she's a liar and she's duplicitous. And even she posted a selfie on Instagram a while back saying the following. Going with the natural look as I start my 36th year. Now, what's natural about yeah. her permed, blonde... Yeah. 
white hair. It's a and weave. Tan skin. Yeah. 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 I mean, here's a woman who you clearly. I mean, when I watch the interviews that she's done, to me, what I see is a woman who's in a lot of pain and has some kind of big issues. Something, 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 something is something seriously wrong. Yeah. wrong. I mean, she she was on NBC News later uh, in the evening after that Today Show uh, appearance, and she said, you know, uh, uh, my birth certificate. I, I don't know. There's no DNA test. I don't know that those are my parents. Oh, okay. oh, oh yes, And, and th there's something oh. wrong with this you woman. Just it's it's it's, it goes back. You are the race you are. You're born the race you well, are. Well, no, you, I'll right? tell you when she'll get white real quick. <laughs> <laughs> when the cops pull her over on the turnpike, that's when she'll become white. Make the ball. Yes, yes. What's making me chuckle about doing this entire story is that our graphic says black-ish. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, she was good at her job at the NAACP. I must tell you, I feel as though, look, she was. I mean, she but, fooled yeah. all those people, right. and she also did a lot of African-American well, studies. Yes, but Prop she could have done that as she is. As a yeah, white exactly. woman. I know, I get it. Are. I didn't yeah. say she was. Did she have to resign? Do you think that she should have resigned? Yeah, she had to yeah. resign. Yeah. You, you know, she, she, if she has any commitment to the organization, she has to resign because she becomes a, a focal point for controversy. Yeah. Yes. They yes. can't get any work done. And, and the worst thing is, <laughs> given all she believes in, she would have to acknowledge that what she's done is a, is a matter of white privilege. You know, yeah. uh, you know she, she can decide to change her race. And this is not an option open to black people. No, and listen, right. at the end of the day, she had to resign. It's a matter of integrity. She was shown to be lacking in integrity, mm -hmm. to, have, to have lied so publicly for such a long time. But the other thing is, let's not forget, and I think it would be a disservice to not acknowledge all the white people who have worked a great deal for racial equality in this country and right. around the world. And she could have done that as, as a, a white, white woman. woman. So let's not forget those people. But she decided that that wasn't good enough for her. At least that's how it seemed. Yeah. She wanted to be on the inside as a black person. I don't it, think it she just, knew what she wanted, you know, frankly, just... except to have that hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob Costas spoke out about uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Um, we're going to do more with Hot Talk and talk about that after these messages. Don't go far. Hot talk panel. All right, so last week Bob uh, Costas spoke out about disagreeing on the decision to give Caitlyn Jenner the Arthur Ashe Courage Award at the ESPYs in July on ABC, a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what he says. I'm pretty sure they could have found someone who was much closer, actively involved in sports, who would have been deserving of what that award represents. It's a crass exploitation play to pump up audience to attract eyeballs to the show. Well, it worked, because I'll be watching. Yeah. Uh, and I also feel as though he deserves this award, Joe. Let's fight. Uh, look, you're not going to get a huge fight out of me. Okay. I think Costas is both right and wrong. Uh -huh. Poor choice of words, crass exploitation, bad choice of words. Yes. But th this is about ratings. He has a point. He, he was careful to say that he believed what Caitlyn Jenner is doing is courageous. Uh, he has a point as well. Well, we could have found someone more closely what? associated with sports. There's a point to that. But that said, this is a silly thing to argue over. Clearly, this award is deserved. It's totally fine. Pointing out that it's about ratings is also totally fine. Yes. I, I mean, Bob Costas has no dog in this fight. What is he doing? Let Caitlyn Jenner get what she deserves. And frankly, she deserves the spray for war. Right, so. and I yeah. think arguing over who's more courageous, there are other, there, on Twitter you see this uh, being played out, Lauren Hill, yeah. the basketball player at brain cancer, old, 19 yeah. years old, passed away. You know, it, it, courage isn't a competition. So and, why and, is he bringing yeah, it up? I mean, Listen, I think, you know, to your point, absolutely right. You can argue all day long about whether there are people that are more courageous who, who deserve the award. But, you know, look at, take the award and look at people who've received it in the past. Robin Roberts has won this award. Nelson Mandela's won this award. It's not always people who are closely tied to sports yeah, well, that have got it. So the I'm okay with Caitlyn Jenner getting it because, let's face it, there's been quite a battle, you know, and, and yeah. Caitlyn... And they probably the fight over who gets this award every single the year. The and big deal now is that they just don't want to perhaps give it to a transgender person and that's my thought well, I think wrong. that being you know the great decathlon athlete that she is and was and I'm um, also being courageous enough in such a masculine yeah, field absolutely. of sports to come out say what you want and we say a lot but <laughs> I, I believe that she deserves I the agree. award and here by the way is yeah. the description 
Although it is a sport-oriented award, it is not limited to sports-related people or actions, as it is uh, presented, uh, excuse me, presented annually to individuals whose contributions transcend sports. So, yeah, it's an example. Who got of it last year? The gay football player, Michael Sapp. Yes, who's so fallen off the face of the earth. Where is he is still he? playing? Uh, no. I don't know. No. Anyway, thank you all for your opinions. For more information on all my panelists. Go to wendyshow.com. Ask Wendy is next. On an all new Wendy. Let me hear you say, ah. We're catching up and getting down with Trey Songs. Plus, find out what's trending now. It's the very latest OMGs and LOLs from the web. Hashtag, how are you doing? Tuesday on an all new Wendy. Wendy. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hi, Wendy. My name is Raphia. So, for the past six months, I've been dating this guy, and he works four jobs. And he's always busy. We speak and see each other during the week, <laughs> but on the weekends, he goes MIA. Is this a red flag? Should I continue doing this or just call it a quits? He's probably sleeping. <laughs> um, all right, so you see him during the week? Sometimes, yeah. What are his work hours? I mean, what is, does he work on the weekends? Sometimes, so he says. It's, it just sounds like it's the six-month mark. Do you really do you need to continue with him? Can you just break up with him? I feel like I'm done. Yeah, I'm done, too. And it's not because, it's not because he's a bad guy, and I'm not going to accuse him of cheating, but some of us need more attention from our partners, and working four jobs right. is just a lot. How old are you, honey bun? 20. Today's yeah. my birthday, actually. Ha happy birthday. Thank Thanks you. for coming here. And how old is he? 23. He's 23 and works four jobs? Yeah. You might want to break up with him, but keep his phone number, because there's, <laughs> like, there's nothing like an ambitious man. Hey, I'll take, I'll later, take later in life. Yes. Thank you. How are you doing? Wendy, how you doing? Good. My name is Nicola, and I've been with my boyfriend for five years, and we live together. Uh -huh. He's recently started a new job and now has female co-workers texting him. I trust my man, but I do not trust females. Mm -hmm. How do I tell him to cut it off and keep it professional? Well, he can't cut it off because these are still his co-workers, right. so you have to harness a bit of security and tell him that when he leaves work, what does he need to talk to them about? Right. Y you know, what, what right. does he do with this job? Um, well, he's a cashier at his job, so I mean, you know, he this works with a lot of different people. Oh, hold so, on. I mean... There's nothing wrong with being a cashier, but, no, he, no. but when he cashes out at the end of the day, okay, okay. he needs to not have them call him. And right. there's, there's nothing wrong with you saying this with your hand on your hip and your neck swirling. Okay. 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 Thank you. We have time for another. Hi, Wendy. How you doing? I'm Felissa. You've been here before. Yes, I, I have. I recognize your thick, luxurious hair. Oh, thank you. Yeah, how can I help? Recently, I ended a friendship with a, a girl who, about four years. Um, she, recently I ended the friendship, and she has been very overbearing and annoying and showed up at my house to ask me why we're not friends. The problem is she lives in my building. And so she just showed up at your door unannounced. She saw my car parked in the garage okay. and kind of followed me. Okay, why did you end the friendship? Because she's needy and overbearing? Annoying, wants to be up in my business, know everything. So the next time she shows up, just to put a, the kibosh on this, tell her exactly what you're saying. I did. And what she said? I, I don't feel comfortable with the friendship anymore. Did she cry? She's like, but I don't understand. <laughs> okay, um, I would get a deadbolt. <laughs> and keep a bat by the door. Got it, got it. Because there's a crazy woman on aisle two. Got it, Thank All right, you. very well. Good to see you again. Up next, everybody, we're going to reveal today's Win a Room in June winner, so don't go far. It's so easy to get fat. Fabulous Wendy Show bling. Just go to wendyshow.com and click Shop Wendy. T-shirts, diva fans, and my favorite mugs, plus more. Are you shopping? So, all month long, we've teamed up with our
our friends at Aaron's for our Win a Room in June contest. You know, Aaron's offers top name brands in furniture, electronics, and appliances. They help people own it without needing credit. Yeah. I know, I know. So today, we're giving away a fabulous kitchen, dining room, and laundry room package to a lucky viewer who wrote into our show. The winner happens to be in our studio audience right now, so let's find out who it is. Drum roll, please. <laughs> the winner of our Aaron's win, win a room in June package is Jackie Wilson! I've seen the pictures. Shout but out to my husband. He's here with me. Your husband and your son. Oh Hi, guys. <laughs> Tell everybody why you need furniture and appliances. Oh Wendy, nothing works in my house. My stove, we're down to three burners. The oven door doesn't work. There's no knob on the stove. Oh, there's no knob. I don't even have a kitchen table. My washer and dryer doesn't work. Wendy, I, I need help. Can Do, you help us? And the boys live at home? The boys live at home. And lots so, of laundry. And there's lots of laundry. Lots of laundry. And I saw a picture of the laundry oh room. Oh my God. It's a hot mess. <laughs> Very hot mess. I'm so glad that we can help you oh out. Are you ready to see what you've won? Wendy, I'm so ready. Okay, open the curtain. <laughs> Congratulations on winning this incredible kitchen, dining, and laundry room package. Your kitchen will get the upgrade it needs with your brand new Frigidaire stainless steel range and Maytag 22 cubic foot French door refrigerator. Nice now your whole family can gather for dinner on your gorgeous seven piece dining room set. This spacious table seats four and comes with matching buffet and hutch. But wait, there's more. There's your more. laundry room will get a facelift with a brand new high tech Samsung top load washer and dryer. This incredible package is worth over $7,700. Oh Jackie, what do you think about your stuff? Oh, I, I can't wait to get on that table. <laughs> tonight, tonight you'll be able to have a dinner sitting down with your family. Yes, yes. Well, thank you so much, Aaron. Aaron, look how happy Jackie is. You know, you can shop at your local Aaron store or at Aaron's.com. They make owning easy so you can own the life you want. Jackie, let's thank go check you, out your new stuff. Thank Up next, we're going to play Celebrity Said What? Don't go far. Virginia, but now he lives in New York where he's a barista. All right, we're gonna play Celebrity Said What, Kev? Okay, part of my goal, you tell me what's up, part of my goal in making money is so that our kids won't have to fly on regular planes and embarrass us. I'm saving up so they can fly private. Who said that? Jimmy Fallon, John Legend, or Kanye West? Kanye West, he likes it. No! It's John Legend. It's okay. You're still a winner here. Here, dinner uh -oh. for two at the Palm Restaurant. Oh, okay. Don't forget the cream finish. I had fun, but I gotta run. I love you for watching. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.